In this screencast, we're going to be talking about an advanced control method called ratio control. So as an example, consider this process shown below in which the feed of acidic wastewater is supposed to be neutralized by the proper stoichiometric amount of sodium hydroxide in a second feed stream. So here would be your acidic wastewater coming in to your um, tank and then you have a solution of sodium hydroxide that also needs to be able to come into the tank. So with ratio control, the proper flow of sodium hydroxide can be maintained. So what's going on here? What you have is you have a feedback control mechanism where the pH of your effluent stream is being measured and the controller for the pH is sending a signal which is a ratio. And it's basically telling, um, the, the signal is saying that the ratio between the flow rate of this stream and the flow rate of this stream needs to be maintained. <clears throat> so if we consider that this is your flow rate, flow rate of acid, and what you have over here is a flow rate of base, then for the two um, streams to become neutralized when they come into contact with each other <clears throat> excuse me when they um, come into contact with, with each other you need the proper ratio of the two flow rates the flow rate of the acid and the flow rate of the base and so what this controller signal will be saying is that it will be giving as its controller signal a ratio so for example if you need the flow rate of your base to be one quarter of the flow rate of your acid, then this signal might be, say, one to four. So you have a very concentrated basic solution and it's trying to neutralize this slightly weaker acid solution. Then what this controller signal will be saying is a ratio of one to four. And that signal then will be multiplied by the flow rate which is measured on this stream here. So this stream, the F acid, is measured and these two signals, the ratio 0.25, will be multiplied by this flow rate. And so what this little x here is, the x implies product. So the 0.25 is being multiplied onto the F acid and therefore this is saying that this stream needs to be 25% of this stream in terms of the flow rate. And so the advantage of this is that a change in the flow rate of acid can be quickly compensated for by a change in the flow rate of the basic solution. But slow minor changes in the pH are compensated through, through the feedback control. So the feedback control, what it will do is if, say, this stream has a slow variation in pH, then the feedback control can adjust this ratio. So if this stream starts to get a little bit more acidic, then this ratio can rise and become closer to one so that F base will neutralize the stronger F acid. And so this is how this particular um, control method works. So what you have is, again, just like in the other advanced control methods we've talked about so far, you have a particular disturbance that can be rejected by this control method. In this case, it would be the flow rate of the acidic wastewater stream. This particular uh, disturbance can be adjusted for, or sorry, compensated for quickly by quickly adjusting the flow rate of the base stream in such a way that the, two, that the ratio of the two flow rates maintains constant. 
And so that will relieve a large burden on the main feedback controller, which is down here, which is your pH controller. When this, F, this stream here has uh, deviations in the pH, then that will show up down here. And as long as the deviation in pH is not very strong and doesn't happen very rapidly, then this feedback controller mechanism can work. So the feedback controller down here does not have to be an aggressive controller. It can compensate for slow and minor variations in the pH coming in from this stream. But a large change in flow rate can be quickly compensated for by this ratio control. Now the way you see it here is that ratio control appears evidently to be some sort of combined control strategy between feedback and feedforward control. So you have this feedback controller here you have your feed forward controller here. So what's happening is this disturbance um, variable is being measured and a signal from that disturbance variable is being sent to the actuator as well as it's, that's being combined with the feedback control signal from this controller. It's slightly different because you don't actually have a controller here sending the signal. So it's not quite feed forward control but it's very similar to that. In addition to that, in this particular example, you have the feedback control ratio control being cascaded onto this flow control loop. Now that's not necessary for feed um, for ratio control to be working, but it is something that, that could be there and may, may even be there typically. Okay, so let's look at a little bit more of a general example of ratio control, which you might see here. So what I've said here is that you have this situation where all flows in your process are directly proportional to your feed streams. So usually there are two feed streams that must be maintained in proper balance in the ratio control. One of these streams is uncontrolled, so it's called the wild stream. So the wild stream is measured, but not changed. And the reason why it's not changed is because a lot of the times you cannot change it. It's coming in from a process that's outside of your um, plant. And so that's why it's called the wild stream. It could have some um, changes to it and you just can't, you can't manipulate the flow rate of that stream. And so, so what you need to do is you need to have a controlled stream or um, a manipulated stream, which is your other stream, that combines with your wild stream in your process and the two flow rates of these two streams need to be maintained in the proper ratio. Now note that the ratio itself is not important. The ratio itself is not important. What's important is that when they combine, they give you the, um, the result is your ultimate objective, which is usually the concentration of your effluent stream. And the right reason why it's usually some sort of concentration is a lot of times the ratio needs to be maintained in, for example, stoichiometric balance. And so therefore the stoichiometric output or the concentration is what needs to be maintained. And a lot of times these um, uh, composition analyzer controllers need to be, uh, they're, they're very slow. And so that's why the, the burden needs to be relieved by some other advanced control method, right? So just to summarize that, what you have here is you have, um, you have a wild stream, which is down here, which is measured, measured, but not changed. And it cannot be changed, right? So that is your wild stream. And you also have another feed stream, which is changed, but not necessarily measured. It could be measured. And if it were, then you would probably be doing a cascade control with a, a, a flow control on the inner loop. And so those are your two streams. You have a measured stream, that, but not changed. That's your wild stream. And you have your other stream, which is your manipulated variable, which is changed, not necessarily measured. The controller output signal is a ratio, and it tells the actuator to maintain this given ratio between the two feed streams. So for example, If your controller signal is 2 to 1 ratio and 
this f here, this guy here, if f equals 2 liters per minute, then u spec equals c, which is this guy here, times f, so c times f, which is equal to 4 liters per minute. And that is how the ratio control maintains the ratio between these two streams.